G'day guys, Mac here with The Outer Circle, and we're here for another episode of The Weekly Scrub Down. As always, I'm here with trusty old Cat. Hello, children. And we're going to go through some uh, releases, some news, that kind of stuff for the week. So, Cat, what did you get up to this week? Uh, I've received some terrain in the mail, which I'm not putting together yet because I'm lazy. I did get a whole bunch of crap undercoated. So I should be doing some airbrushing in this weekend, but I was working on my motorbike today, so I didn't get much done. How about you? I've seen a lot of pictures up of the Master Don. Yeah, um, another week, another bit more on the Master Patron. Um, yeah, that's, I've been working really hard this week, um, so I haven't had much time to actually spend on the hobby myself, which people probably know because of the lack of videos. I think I've only put one, maybe two up since the last scrub down. Um, yeah, Mastodon, man. It's it's taking up my patience. It's pretty big, though. Yeah. Is Don is good. That was an ad from the 90s, 1992, I believe. And um, it's, it's a sliced meat. It's a ham um, and processed meat product. It was also poisoned. Uh, many times, so yeah, good work. Yeah, it was, the Don. It was like that uh, poisoned um, hot dog off The Simpsons when Homer gets yes. his food poisoning. <laughs> Quiet, I can't hear the dog. The dog is barking. But yeah, someone put I, glass and shit in there. <laughs> I think you may have a bee in your bonnet. A bee? <laughs> ah. All right, let's get into uh, this shit, shall we? Yeah, so yeah, Macedon, um... I've got most of it together now, most of the parts on, um, put a crew member in there. I decided to buy, um, some Mark II crew members just to do something different with it. Um, the top hatch with the crew member is fixed in place, but the one, the other one, the other top hatch, I guess, the, the, the second tier hatch, um, is removable still, so I can put, like, a standing up crew member in. I um, also took a few photos of the Macedon with like infantry in and around it because people kept asking me for that. Because they're like, how big is mm. this thing? What's it look like? Didn't you put it next to a uh, Bane Blade or something Yeah, as uh, well? The, the first set of photos I did, I put next to a Rhino and a Bane Blade because I'm like, surely people can extrapolate size from this. And I uh, was wrong. <laughs> uh, people. Uh, the thing was, right, one guy... Like, I'm more than happy if people go, I have questions. Like, I won't put them down or tease them. I am right now because this one guy turns around to me and he goes, is this bigger than, you know, a certain tank from Forge World? So I reposted that picture of it with, like, the Rhino and the Bane Blade. And he's like, those aren't that tank. And I'm thinking, okay, if the other tank that he mentioned was, like, a Melkador or something like that, um, you know you know how big that is next to one of these. So if you do the math, you can probably figure out, you know, how, how big it should be. Ah, <laughs> uh, what, a, what a crazy guy. Yeah, so, I don't know. I found it a bit silly, but who am I to tease people? So, yeah, I um, magnetized both the top hull parts. Um, the doors obviously have their little pistons and stuff, and so I can fully, like, enclose it and assemble it, um, or I can take the top off and actually put infantry inside it, so that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, I spent a lot of time getting the fit just right, and I know Michael over at Eye of Horus podcast, he um, was messaging me the other day saying he was having a bit of trouble um, getting it to line up straight, because he obviously painted the individual components before assembling them, whereas I assembled mm -hmm. it and then painted the components. Get wrecked, Michael. Uh, yeah, he put little uh, numbers on his lockers. I don't. Is there numbers on your lockers? No, Forge World did that as well, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then I was like, but I am pretty lazy. So I have no numbers is the long short of it, I guess. There's no joke there. I was lazy. Minus and I didn't 10 put numbers points on. to Macca. Yes, so. The you, sh you can always put the little scarabs on there. Yeah, well, I've got plans for certain decals on the um, outside of it. Um, actually, that's a good segue. What was released from Forge World this week? Not much, to answer the question. 
yeah, no, not much. Um, we have a decal sheet and tickets to their open day. Um, yeah, I, I really like the decal sheet. What do you think of it? Um, I like the fact that they launched a PDF with it, where it, uh, it breaks it up into sections, one, two, three. It's got actually two sections there, ones and twos. I think some are vehicles and shit like that. But it actually goes down, has a a numerical little thing at the bottom, a a guide, I guess. It tells you what each individual bit is. Yes. So I don't know if you have that. So one is a legion icon and four is support markings and then 16 is the fellowship icons because, you know, the fucking fellowship of the ring you got to give them due credit. Wait. Hey, hey man, Gandalf was a is wizard. It the same thing? It was the same thing, right? Yeah, same thing. He was a wizard. Um, Where the yeah. fuck do you think wizards come from? New Zealand? Ooh, like that. Fucking New Zealand? Order of the Jackal. Oh, man. Have you seen the movie The Jackal? That was a sick movie. Yeah, it, that's the one with um, Bruce Willis and... Who was that dude out of Pretty Woman? Richard Gere? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that him. was real good. It was hilarious. Good times. They put, like, cyanide on the car door handle and that dude fucking died trying to open the car. Yeah, and the big gun that he shoots the dude with to, um... Oh, fucking... yeah, that was Jack Black. That was actually, yes, he kills yeah. Jack Black. Kills That's Jack why I love the movie. Get fucking wrecked, Jack Black. He makes Get him... Re- he makes fucking him... wrecked. He, what is it? The sights are off? No, no, they're fine. Yeah, that, no, no, the, he, um... Was t- it the sights? No, yeah, it was the sights the, um, were off. It's... No, only because he did machining incorrectly for the, um... For the uh, servos or something, yeah, some shit like that. The servos <laughs> didn't align properly, and he just told you where they are. <laughs> so what, what was that? I can't even. It's been so long since I've seen the Jackal. Now I want to see it. It was like a Dashka or something too. It was no, like, it wasn't a Dashka. It was. I think it was a Finnish or a Swedish uh, gun. Oh, like an Erlikin or something. Some uh, it was some sort of fuck man. You can get those things now to fit on jeeps. So yeah, GG. Oh, it was it was pretty sweet though. Like what, you can get Jack, them, you can you know, buy those things that. now to get them out of the box to just do that. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> if you have enough money, you know, it, drop, drop any, a couple of days. Anyone grand. who's seen the technicals out of like Africa and the Middle East, like fucking dudes in like Holden Rodeos and Toyota Hiluxes, just bolting fifty cows to the back of you. <laughs> it gets the job done. But yeah, do you like? Do you reckon these? Well, you're a uh, Thousand Sun player. Do you? It oh. seems they just went with the two-tone color. There's no other variation. Oh, no, there is. You've got the gold ones that look like they're uh, embossed, I guess. And then you have the, the white, the flat white, and then you have a flat gold, but it's yellow. It's not. I think bronze, like, maybe? Yeah, I don't know if it's metallic or not. Does I, it have I, I think it's metallic. I, th- I think it's just very uh, diluted. But I, I really like okay. it because... There's tons of Legion icons. It's not like there's not lightning all over the place. There's not hazard stripes everywhere. There's not banners everywhere. There's some awesome looking like scarab glyphs and banners. Don't get me wrong. But there's heaps of markings for your actual infantry for a change. Um, yeah, yeah. In that regard, I think it's one of the best um, decal sheets so far, to be honest. I like the little eagle thingies with the world in there. That's really hypnotic. Oh, with the Oribus the in there? Yeah, that's cool. I like that. I mean, you could even change that out to have an actual gem in there if you wanted to, maybe. Oh, I true, know. true. Well, we do have the majestic dung beetle as well. Ah, yes. I Hopefully they get swarms of scarabs. That'd be cool. Oh, we could go like full um, the mummy. The, the Brendan, uh, yeah. Brendan Fraser mummy, not Boris Karloff mummy. Yeah, and then um, the Space Wolves or Custos can have Brendan Fraser. It'd be pretty funny to see a bunch of Space Wolves getting eaten by scarabs. We'd be pretty sick. Yeah, quite, probably suck for them, but whatever. I don't like Space Wolves. I think their fucking heresy fluff is a bit underwhelming. It's a bit douchey. Whoa, whoa. And you said you weren't just going to go out of your way to offend people. Look what you've done. Oh, no. Well, I guess I'm crying myself to sleep tonight. Um, yeah. No, the reason I think Wolf in Heresy is douchey is because they they keep doing things like like with the Suns where they're like, oh, witches are bad. Yeah, psychics bad. You can't have psychers. Everyone's like, what about your Stormseers? Oh, no, those are different. <laughs> they use invisible powers, but they're derived from Fenris, not the warp, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, like, uh, they aren't. They aren't derived, 
from the warp, so that kind of makes sense that they can actually use them and other people can't. I mean, if the other people had other things, uh, sure. But yeah, they're yeah, a little no, bit they use, They're using the warp. Too. They're using the same warp as everyone else nah, to get their magic. No, nah, nah, they're not. Queen of the harpies. No, I'm not. Queen of the harpies. No, I'm not. Anyways, there was enough light on the Thousand Suns. I think they're probably the least played uh, faction, obviously. Um, and, and that's good. <clears throat> that's a good thing. Yeah, until they become OP as hell or they get nerfed. We'll see. Uh, but with all these icons, it looks to me like they're going to have some pretty goddamn unique... Um, they have destroyer markings, so that yeah. means they're going to have destroyers, I guess. you could. So if you're a Thousand Suns player, don't worry. You can run a destroyer mark, unless their destroyers have fucking... Uh, they're just like the kids from Hogwarts, like, and they've all got wands instead of dual bolt pistols and stuff. They've just got wands and they just, yeah, shoot shoot stuff, people with their wands. Maybe that is just a completely different thing. They've got, they've got tactical markings, so they will have tactical markings. So, so I thought they'd be completely different, man. The, the fluff about Thousand Suns in battle is like, a lot of like the way they use their psychic powers is an unwritten thing. Um... Well, not unwritten, like, you, you couldn't visualise it in the game very well. Because it's things like, you know, each squad is made up of members of different psychic disciplines. So you'll have, yeah. like, the, the telepath guy will be like, or sorry, the diviner will be like, oh, fucking enemy's about to ambush from around the corner. And then, like, another dude, a telekine, will be like, okay, th- cool, and he throws up, like, a protective force field around him. And then the pyro dudes will, like, flame the guys when they come around the corner. And if anyone gets injured, mm. then, like, the biomancers heal them with, like, biomancy. So, it, and it's you, basically you, a world... You couldn't really visualize that very well in the rules, which is why this you, book you is can. taken it's so long. You can. It's a World long. of Warcraft raid. That's all it is. You just described a freaking raid in one of those uh, MMORPGs. Well, it's so... funny you mention that because uh, a certain Primarch has been released who looks like he's armed with a fucking Warcraft raid weapon. <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> More on that later. Um, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, because of that way they use their, their psychic powers, I think we won't see them being used across the board in the army. I don't think they'll go full psycho. I think they'll really restrict what units are and aren't psycho. Like, we'll probably get one or two. You know how, like, Empress Children have, like, Palantine Blades and Phoenix Terminators? We'll probably get, like, Psychic mm-hmm. Terminators, Psychic, a special elite psychic squad, and maybe all our characters will be psychers. And then everyone else will pretty much be stock standard, I reckon. Okay, well, I reckon that they will have a Psyker per unit, which will give them, like, maybe like a Brotherhood of Psychers, you know, but like what you said, either like a heal capability or a flame capability, and that will uh, change the squad's dynamic, and you'll be able to do that. That's what I reckon. You know how I do it? Like, far be it for me to criticise Forge World, which I've never, ever done before, but... um you know how Possessed used to work in 40k and still kind of work now? Where you just roll yeah. a d6 each turn and you get a certain, you know, boon? Well, that's oh, yeah. how I'd run them. I'd say, like, you roll a 1, you would fail to get a power off. You roll a 2, you get a pyromancy power. You roll a 3, you get a biomancy power, that kind of thing. And it's just a I hate that. buff to the that unit sucks. rather than... No, it's not a buff. Because at the moment, the psychic phase is just a clusterfuck and adding more yeah. dice like having to roll more power dice and more dispel rolls and things like that is just would overcomplicate it. So just give them a flat buff on a D6. I no, that's what I mean. You should be able to buy a buff for the units like Pyro or a medic, uh, a feel no pain kind of thing um, and a, or a flame kind of ability, something like that anyway, or a defensive ability. So units getting char- charging that tactical squad, uh, your tactical squad gets, uh, you know, five dig threes or something attacks on the fucking um yeah so i reckon they could do it i don't think they should do it randomly though because randomness just breaks the game thank you chaos codex in 40k well randomness can be a good thing as long as the randomness doesn't have game breaking outcomes if it's something like your 230 point wizard is fucking banished from the battlefield that's breaking the game if your 230 point wizard gets plus one toughness, it's not a game breaker. So yeah, well, Russ did that, didn't he? He fucking banished that motherfucker pretty hard. Get wrecked. Yes. Yeah, but Magnus had a portal gun and got right the fuck out of there. So 
What a coward. Yeah, he went to the, the Magnus dimension. So, anyway, enough of Thousand Sons. People uh, keep asking me what I'm going to piss and moan about now that I've got decals. So, I've got a few options. I've still got the Primark I can piss and moan about, the book I can piss and moan about, um, the fact that we still don't have any rules I can piss and moan about, but really, I'm just happy with what I've got, so... Speaking of You're things... You're doing more than most. You, you at least have a painted army. You have a uh, Lord of War. You have a Mastodon of that, which is more than most people can say. It's like, oh, I have 16,000 points. It's not, is any of that painted? No. It only counts if, it, if it's painted, people. It only counts if it's painted. So good luck with that. You should get painting. Don't Listen you to love this it when you. people aren't showing your work in progress and they're just showing off their army? It's, it's always fucking Imperial Guard and Nid players, right? And they mm. and they weigh out their whole army and they put a picture on Facebook and there'll be like one or two, like, 20-man squads painted up, a couple of characters and one or two tanks or flyers. And then every fucking thing else is in, like, grey, hasn't been even primed. Yeah. Or there's tough. tanks that have primed, but they're on, they're on only bases, partially sure. primed. <laughs> you know, you'll see, like, tanks that... You know, the turret's black, but the hull's still grey and things like that. It's like, no one gives a fuck how big your army is if it's not painted. Essentially, yeah. you may as well just lay all the fucking models out in the boxes that came in. Mm. Yeah, Because agreed. that's what it is. It's, it's just shit. It's unassembled. I can go, into, people I can go into a games time, workshop and see fine. that. Like, there are a lot of uh, cheap alternatives now for your, to paint it yourself, to get it painted in a couple of days. Like, I'm talking... Uh, I painted 120 nids in a day uh, with uh, blue and bone. Then I just washed them. This is when the new washers, the GW washers, came out. And I just washed them with, I think it was a uh, their brown wash anyway. And then I just highlighted them up. And that was it. And I basted them with some static grass. And I got like $2 a model for doing that or something. So there's a lot of... Uh, cheap alternatives to paint them out there with by yourself if you don't have the time but you have money you can there is a myriad of people that will do it for money um i wouldn't do it again to save my life uh fuck that but um there's a uh, lightning paint painting if you want it done fast in a week or whatever and at cost and yeah definitely look at that as well because there's nothing better than having a fully painted army uh, people will poke less fun at you. Yeah, if, if you're having like a friendly game or something on the weekend, and it's unpainted, and you put pictures of your game up, that's one thing. It's when people like have all their models laid out in their kitchen floor and take a photo of all their unpainted stuff. Mm, it's kind, it's of, kind like, of pointless. Well, time, yeah, it's that time you could have used to uh, paint your army. And and especially with guard armies, like most guard armies, people don't deviate too far from like the Cadian pattern. So it's like literally all you need to do is go out buy an army painter, spray can, olive drab, spray everything in that, right? Get a fucking couple of bottles of washes and just wash all your fucking models with it, you know? And then you've only got to go around and do like barrels and tracks on all your tanks. Like yeah, you and can, you know... You, can, you could do it so fast if you put yeah. your mind to it. So you can do it fast or you can do it progressively. Like one week, spray them all green. Then the next week... Add uh, progressively add the the uh, the creams to the pants, <laughs> cream pants, and then uh, you know add the metallics the next week, and you can keep on playing with them the home games or whatever. I have them on the bases, but you can you know just get them to the next level week after week, and you can progressively do that. It, yeah, but time is an issue. But I mean, fuck, if you've spent the money to get them at that point, then you may as well go the extra effort to just get them some level of painting. Well, yeah, it's the hobby, and painting is a part of the hobby, you know. And if you what, don't like that part, extent you add, then... To what know, extent you people. do it is, is, of course, up to you, but, you know, like people ask me how I paint so fast, but I've just got a heap of time on my hands, as a certain Michael said. Um, I'm fucking watching you, cunt. Um, I, I have an assembly line technique. So if I'm painting a squad of 1,000 suns, I get 10 built. I take them outside... I spray paint them all flat silver. Then I come inside and I weigh out every paint I'm going to need, right, in a big row across my desk. So I'll have, you know, a silver, a gold, um, a really dark silver, 
my clear reds, some white, some clear green, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll go, okay, first coat is going to be a bright silver over everyone with the airbrush. So that goes on. Then the next paint's, you know, a dark silver. So then that'll go on in patches to give contrast. Then the clear red will go on, right? And each time I finish with a paint, I can put it away. I've gone through that step. So all 10 guys. And I just do that the whole way through. Paint a certain part in a certain color. And once all the parts that are that color are done, that color goes away. And and you can paint models so fast when you do that. Like I see people paint at like games workshops and hobby stores and they dick around. They pull out a paint and then 20 minutes later they decide, oh, I want to add some white to it. And then they're rummaging back through their, their painting box. It's like, no. Once you come up with your basic scheme, make it as simple for yourself as you can, right? Know what you need and get it prepped before you start the job so you're not walking away and distracting yourself constantly. So my, my two cents anyway, you know, feel free to not listen to me. So. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of the gym. Just fucking get in there and do your fucking sets and, you know, choose your piece of equipment, use it. Move on. It's, it's like you don't gym. have to go in there with fucking 12 towels, place them everywhere, then fucking go on your phone and, you know, oh, no, that's fine. Fucking some bro science shit going on there. Um, yeah, and I can understand that some people want to, uh, they don't want to paint it because their level's not up to the scratch yet, but how are you going to get your level up without painting? Like, you're just going to stagnate in a period of not painting. So you need to paint something to get better. It's like any skill, if you let it lack, um, like let it wax, then of course you're going to, um, is that the term, let it wax? I think it is. No, no, it's a degradable skill. I know what you're saying. But, yeah, you know, um, like welding, welding's need... a big thing in my trade. Um, you know, if you do welding and you get good at it, you don't want that skill to, to lapse. There we go, lapse, that's it. Um, you know, if you, you're a good TIG welder and you, you go away from it for a couple of years and then come back to it, your hand shakes a bit more, you're having trouble moving things at the right speed. Well, it's the same with painting. If you don't keep on it constantly, you know, you, you'll start to lose it. You'll start to forget how you thin your paints properly. Yeah, use water. That's the best one. Probably not petrol. I just, I just had that horrible thought, Kat, um, but we were talking about um, after the show last week, the thin your paints. Oh, yeah, what the hell. So... How would you explain how a successful meme works to people? Well, I don't know. I mean, you can go on different directions with the meme. If it's annoying people, then I'd say then the meme's done its job. I, I find that if if I'm creating a meme, I want it to... Um, I, 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 I want to make a meme, right? It's going to be of a certain topic, and then I'm going to rework that joke. And I won't just post the exact same meme constantly. And at the moment, there seems to be this fucking fetish all over fucking face stalk that you have to have that Duncan thin your paints. And it's just constantly, every fucking few hours, someone puts a meme up about Duncan thin your paints. Duncan, of course, is the guy that does hobby tips over at Ford um, Games Workshop. That's not funny. <laughs> People, you know. No, I, I think it's pre it's pretty funny. I've been putting it on things that are irrelevant, which oh, is that's, that's hilarious. A it's classic shit posting. Application of it, like, you see, if if someone puts up their miniatures and you just say thin your paints, constantly, that's boring. What you got to do is get creative with where you put the meme. So you know, like you might see severe flooding and a whole community has been swept away and thousands are dead. And then you put up, uh, you've thinned your paints too much. That's creative. You're also going to hell, but that's creative. Right? And that makes it more funny. So, I don't know why I went and bitched about that for two minutes, but... Nah, I say post it more. Just post it on everything. Whenever someone has a baby or something in your family on Facebook, just post that meme there of Duncan. Then don't forget to thin your paints. But, you know, at work. On your work website, just do that as well, just everywhere. Hack yeah. the government, put it everywhere, just why not? There we go. All right, so Games Workshop new releases. Um, Gene's still a cult, man. They're back. People have yeah, been asking about, for them uh, for 20 for me, years. Well, I reckon eight years too late for me. 
Yeah, same here. But let's let's you know just sort of quickly cover off on them anyway. Um, yeah, what do you think of them? Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, um, they tend to look really cartoony. Yeah, I think that's just part of GW's general dumbing down of the hobby into Warcraft piece by piece. Which is, you know, ironic, because as everyone knows, Warcraft tried to make Warhammer games. Oh, sorry, not Warcraft, Wizard. Uh, who makes Warcraft. Um, they had they were going to try and make a Warhammer game, or a 40k game, back in like the early mid-90s, and Games Workshop told them to fuck off. So Blizzard then went and made um, Warcraft and Starcraft, and the rest is history. Hmm. Yeah, I, I heard that about... Uh um, yeah, the space one. Spacey craft? I don't know. Whatever. Starcraft. Um, yeah, lame craft. Co- Korean so craft. The limited edition is 320 Australian. I like the tokens. The tokens are a lot better than the Australian. Sorry, not than the Australian one. Than the Chaos ones. Yeah, they look cooler. Uh, I was looking at them before. I'm just pulling them up now. So they, they've got like that um, old school Tyranid symbol. Like yeah, the, you could use them as the ninja stars. Not HR Giga symbol. Yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, the wrapping of the box itself looks. Pr- I don't know why the fuck I put a picture of that in there. It's just black wrapped in tissue paper. Okay, cool. What the fuck? <laughs> All right, whatever. Um, but then to hold your icons and your cards and shit, it's got a piece of foam, which is cool, I guess. Use that as a, on your display board or something. So that's kind of cool. It's still not three hundred and twenty dollars worth of cool, but it's cool nonetheless. Yeah, I, I don't know what this would be in Australian dollars. Oh, sorry, what this would be in countries that are not Australian. Like, what's our currency to America at the moment? It is about seventy. Uh, seventy six or something. Seventy six cents or something. So you know, in America, this should sell for around two ninety three hundred dollars. I reckon if I swap to a US, the USA, it, I reckon it's going to come up as way less than two ninety dollars. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to find out if I have to uh, eat my words. It hasn't even hasn't even come out yet in the USA on on their version of the website. No, I've heard that. I think it's only in Asia. Could be UK. Try UK. Uh, then I'll be converting to pounds. Although that's pretty easy. Pounds, yeah, pounds are about half of our currency. Nah, it's more or less than half now. I think I'll get the thing up. Yeah, their economy's fucked. So either way, um, at three twenty, we should be looking at around one hundred and fifty, one hundred and sixty pounds. Um, if if it was a direct currency conversion. Ooh, the silence. Yeah, it's 115 pounds, so... It's about... So it should be 188. For 300, 320 Australian dollars is 188 pounds. Yeah, so there you go. You, it's like a six, That's like a 60% markup just for being in Australia. And no, it's not the shipping. No, it's not the production costs. It's not any of that. Uh, if, uh, if, <laughs> fuck... Every time I run a business, my own engineering business, I also work for a steel company, um, and you know, bring in dealing with millions of dollars of like steel and things like that. And some of it comes from Asia, some comes from Germany. And fuck, man, I know all about pricing shit and how much it costs to ship things in bulk around the world. Yeah, GW is just blatantly fucking ripping us off. Sorry. Well, they're not really because we have other options like, you know, living in the Asian Pacific, we can actually go to other dealers like Recasters and buy it. And yeah, it says people not that are we taking condone, money from... Not that you, we condone Recasters, I don't give, but I don't, some people... It's not me. I don't fucking do it. I'm, it's not my business, but I can buy whatever the fuck I want in this country from whoever I want because that is not my fucking issue. It's the person who makes its issue. Uh, thank fuck the laws are like that here. Uh, GG France and Italy. But... Uh, down here, why would you do that to a country that is so close to Pirate Island, aka Hong Kong? Uh, 
it just makes no goddamn <laughs> sense. It just doesn't make any damn sense. It's, you're paradigm. digging your own fucking grave, and like, oh, but you're you're destroying your um the uh, your local uh, hobby stores and stuff. There are no local hobby stores near me. I live uh, pretty well much in the Australian desert. There's a lot of scorpions and there's some brown snakes. Pretty and cute. And the scorpions and the snakes are making mating and making snake scorpions. I haven't seen that, but... Um, uh, come on, it's Australia. They're probably out there. Uh, yeah, so anyway, getting on to the units. Yes, uh, so they look pretty cool. They're cartoony, a bit cartoony. Um, that's always been a consequence They always of, have been. That's GW. always been. Like, I think it's a drawback to the 90s anyway, so that's that's cool, I yeah, guess. Yeah, is so. cool. We're cool with that. Um, I really like them. I'm not going to diss the kits. As much as I fucking hate Games Workshop's business practices, the kits are cool. So I'm not going to just shit on them. Um, they're just, I think they're a bit late for me. Eight, ten years oh, back. Oh, definitely. It's not going to get me back into 40k at all. Yeah, eight, eight, ten years back, I would have gone straight for them, I reckon. Fucking Jesus. Okay, so you've got the subterranean uprising, which is the first unit uh, that comes up, and that's uh, $210. What the fuck do you get for the subterranean uprising? Uh, it's £75 in the UK. What the fuck? What do you get beneath something, something, something? So again, guys, like UK pounds to dollars in Australia. Okay, you get the... That would give you about $150. So we're paying an extra... How much did you say it was? For the subterranean uprising? 210 210 So we're paying an extra... Fuck, 100 and, uh, Sorry, an extra 60 bucks. So we're basically paying an extra 30%. Well, it's, it's bullcrap. You get five men of hybrid metamorphs and two five-man sets of Al- acolyte... Hybrids. So you get 15 dudes. They look pretty cool, though. I'm not paying fucking... What the fuck? They're, they're not that price cool, but they're cool. I'm not paying fucking 12 bucks a fucking miniature. Fuck off. Plastic shit. No way. Fuck off. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, you see, potential was there if we really... If the prices were good, we probably would have gone and bought these. Like, I probably would have. I would have probably would have invested the money and bought a bunch of these Gene Steeler Colts. Don't but, lie. No, you but, wouldn't. No, you know. I would. I, I, I've been painting Power Armor for so long. Sometimes you just want to change. No. And, and well, I always loved the old Gene Steeler Colts. Like, way back in the day, I used to have a, a Gene Steeler Patriarch because I just thought he was a cool model. You know, obviously, yeah. in hindsight, not that cool a model. <laughs> 90s sculpts, some haven't stood the test of time. You know, I, I wouldn't have minded buying these. I still am kind of interested in them. I bought some of, like, the... Yeah, um, definitely. The Blight Kings of Nurgle from, like, Fantasy that got released in that end times just to paint some Nurgle dudes up because I thought they looked cool. Um, You know, so it does... It does... I can do it. It does happen. I, but, yeah, the prices are just so ludicrously high. I might buy one of those kits a year, if that, to paint. Just for the fun of painting, okay. and that's a shame. Yeah, well, like, I, I used to, that. I used to buy way more kits just for the fun of painting them. Yeah, fair enough. I probably wouldn't if I had it for free. I probably wouldn't burn it, uh, unlike some other things that I've done. So yeah, but getting on. Uh, so the Gene Steeler Colts Codex Painting Guide Cards and Dice. That's what you get. One hundred and seventy-five dollars. Uh, you get some dice. You get some cards, and you get the Codex, and you get some other shit. All right, it's just a whole bunch of other shit. Uh, and you get a how to paint thing, painting guide, yeah, pff, well, whatever. Eh, $157. Which I'm guessing that's how much the codex is. You may, that might be a potential saving because you get dice as well, but I'm guessing 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you're getting 20 dice, which is not, you want to really. You want, you want two lots of 20, that is, 40, because you'll be yeah. shooting. I'm guessing these guys will have some guard-type units. Anyway, that's nothing here I'd just, just buy Chessex dice. I, I reckon they could probably cost them. Yeah, you could, and you can get the little engraving put on there anyway. Uh, all right, well, uh, they are funky dice, though. If you have had a look at the dice, 
They're pretty funky. They're pretty funky. I do like the, the dice. I don't like them myself. It's like the inset marble on them. It's really weird. Yeah, but then they like, uh, they've got a square outer case. So they're really they're more squared off than Chessek dice. Uh, it looks like they're more balanced. They they look like they're purposely going out of the way to balance them differently. There's like a circle window. It's it's really weird to explain. You can check them out. They look weird. They might be to some people's taste. To me, they just look. Like like the they, they, they've modified all the dice to roll a higher average proportion of ones just to fuck with the customers one last time who paid for this. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, there are some good videos on how to test your dice for that with salt water, salt water like how people do it with uh, golf balls. Uh, golfers do it with their golf balls to see if they're all uh, nice and um, formed correctly. Anyway, I don't, so I don't then, bother with that because my golf balls... I've only got them for about 30 seconds before they're in a fucking bush or a tree somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I, I only like... <laughs> Maybe it's because they're unbalanced. There you go. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, so we've got Gene Steeler Colts dry brushing paints bundle, $146 for 27, 26 paints, I think. Mm, no, nah. I do like some of the game, Games Workshop technical paints now. I do like some of their... Um, yeah, pretty much all their technical washes. paints are good. Oh, oh, I like I'll some of their washes. I do like some of their washes. They've got a uh, a gloss wash now, uh, like null oil and stuff, which has got a gloss in there. So it means that you don't have to uh, go to their actual for glossing your miniature. Week. You don't need to gloss your miniature to put a varnish. You don't have to put a high gloss or a satin varnish over the miniature before uh, washing them. So you can just have it on a mat and it'll give that... Obviously, you'd need to put a matte varnish over them afterwards, but yeah, because I've already got the um, gloss medium in the wash rather than a matte medium, uh, it'll go in the recesses a lot more finer. Oh, yeah. It would be harder. Obviously, you don't build up with that kind of wash. You want a matte wash, but yeah, so I, I like them. That's a cool idea. I, I picked up uh, a couple of the new paints um, this week, so the the tall pots with the known oil with like the gloss... Um, the new bronze, I got the something something brass metallic. Um, and I also picked up some of the shades, as well as um, some more of the technicals, because I've gone through quite a bit of the um, Nilaka Oxide, I think it's called, the blue one, for doing your bronze work. And that's a nice. really good technical, um, if you thin it a little bit. Um, and trying to like stipple it on, apply it patchy, so that it looks like real burnished bronze because i do a lot of work with bronze in real life and i know what it looks like so i'm a bit pedantic like that but yeah i've got the uh fulgurite copper liberator gold i had already and i picked up skull crusher brass as well so some there you, go, you can pick up one of these bundles and have a whole bunch of useless paints in your i didn't get a bundle i went to my local friendly hobby center which is not games workshop because the nearest games workshop is 130 kilometers away <laughs> and game the local hobby store of course has a pretty um, good discount on them over GW retail. Um, That's the only way they can really make money, though. But then they're making like thirty cents a pot. It's atrocious. Yeah. Sort of that. But anyway, so there's a Gene Steeler Colt Acolyte and Neophyte Hybrids, one forty Australian. Looks like you get ten dudes armed with auto guns. Auto pistols and blasting charges. Oh yeah, I think their deal with these guys is like they're from mining colonies or some shit. I don't know why they'd all be from mining colonies. You'd think that genus Steeler Colts would be from other places as well. But okay. Uh, and then you get five Acolyte Hybras armed with auto pistols, close combat weapons, blaster charges, and rending claws. Uh, there's more. You also have a dude with a freaking chainsaw, man. No, it, it's uh, it looks like an angle grinder, I guess, <laughs> or something. Uh, well, that's good. Good on him. He's getting the job <laughs> uh, it done. It looks like a paving cutter, uh, like a um. Oh, okay. When yep. you cut concrete, when you cut slabs, um, put spacing in, in concrete. Really, slabs. I'd I'd like to make a useless uh unit, like just have a guy with an orbital sander or something, just buffing. Buffing the uh, buffing his ride or something that'd be sick. So then there's another bundle, uh, Colt layer paints. It's just uh, layer paints. It's $140, cheaper than the dry brushing bundle. I don't know. I wouldn't. 
I don't know if you'd need that many paints for the bundle. I I guess if I don't know, whatever. Uh, the codex itself is eighty three dollars by itself, Australian. Uh, you get mm, there's neophyte hybrids. They look like a standard troops choice, uh, which is their seventy dollars. Acolyte hybrids, they're seventy dollars. They look like they're more. Yeah, they've got like more. They're more genified. Gene I, I am willing to put money down that the acolyte hybrids and the hybrid metamorphs, the next one along, are the exact same unit, just um, rearmed. So you know the typical three what? screws. Yeah, the yeah. And not there'll acolyte. be three three sprues in one box, you know, and two if you combine two sprues you get the hybrids. If you combine you know, the other sprue you get the metamorphs, something like that. I reckon the hybrids will be either a more expensive true choice. Or they I reckon they could actually be elites. And then you have the metamorphs, which yeah, it obviously goes up the neomites, ac- neophyte, acolyte, and then the hybrid metamorphs. So they've got, ooh, they've got a banner. Oh, and they've got flame pistols. They're like really genified, gene stealerified. They're like gene stealers with fucking hand flamers. They've obviously been uh, talking to blood angels from 30k. The, uh, uh, the thing with this, though, is I would have liked to have seen more of the... Um, more of the, like, gangers type thing, like Necromunda gangers. Yeah, they've obviously gone with the um, the old workman um, here. That's that's apparent. It's obvious that it's a mining colony. So it's definitely uh, got... What's that freaking one with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it where he goes to that Mars planet? And oh, it was tr- um, um, but not a Total dream. Recall. Yeah, that so very total got recall. A terrible remake. Every time a movie gets a terrible remake, I have to mention it subliminally. Yes. Or overtly like, in this case. Well, you have your digital copies as well of the Codex, which is... Yeah, fuck digital copies, they're stupid. Well, at least they're not exactly the same price. At fifty nine ninety nine, they've got the fifty nine ninety nine down pat, so they don't want to just say $60, because that looks expensive to people. Fifty nine ninety nine. what hell can I go lower than fifty nine ninety nine? So that's cool. And the e-book one is fifty one ninety nine. What the fuck? Yeah, there's literally no extra work in making the ebook one. Oh no, there's an enhanced. I don't understand. Um, o- it over the enhanced, like once you've made the enhanced, you could literally just, you know, print screen. <laughs> you know, and yeah, just, or just you make know, you, your own you PDF could, out of it. You could and crack that would, it. That would yeah. create. You could crack it an and then send it out across the internet, and everyone could just download it for free. Uh, cool. So then you have the Gene Steelers Cult Dice. And they are thirty-five dollars. I'm just going to see if they've actually got twenty of them in there in, in the description. <laughs> so it's five by four, so it should be twenty. But we'll see in the description. It's just like this contains one die. Uh, uh, yeah, now instead of twenty translucent purple, sixteen millimeter dice. Ah, sixteen mil. Okay. Yeah, um, that's that's right. That's that's um, the same as X big dice. Size. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Featuring a Gene Stealer cult icon in place of the one. No! No! That's not how you do it. You have it as a six. What the fuck, man? Oh, idiot. Oh, my God. That's not cool. You don't want it as a one. You want it as a six. Uh, some people, yeah. That uh, always whatever. frustrates me when I, when I would be at, like, a tournament. And I see a dude roll, like, um, a heap of the fucking symbol. And it always confused me because on one game it'd be like a one, and I'd be really happy, and the next game it'd be a six, and I'd be really fucking unhappy. <laughs> yeah, and all, some companies that do these icon dice obviously give you the option of what number you want it on. Man, I'll just get it on a three or something. You're yeah. fucking hilarious. Do you want your symbol to be the one? Do you want your symbol to be the loser? Because that's what the one is. It's the loser. What on about the, dice. the leadership? Nobody gives a fuck about leadership. Yeah, people if you, go, do if you that. get to the point where Either you take your leadership, leadership twenty test. leadership dice. That's that's t- twenty leadership dice. Nah, all right. The container looks pretty cool as well. It looks like it'll be used. You know, unlike the Chess X ones that last uh, as soon as you open it, they break. Uh, they're not really designed as a storage device. This looks like it'll work for about two or three times of using it, and then it will break. <laughs> Is it like GW paint pots? Will the lid either stay on or stay off? <laughs> the dice will dry no, out. No, it just stands off. Uh, then you have the data cards. Um, oh, fucking data cards. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand GW with their thing with data cards. 
So it's like your DLC kind of thing. You got to buy units now to get these. It's just fucking ridiculous. Fucked up cards, this, this man. How, this last one here, the what, what's the, the how to paint Citadel miniatures? I've I've bought one of these Should before out of curiosity, right? Um, an ebook one. This shit should not be something you have to pay for. This shit should be your optional extra. You know, you know how like some some websites, for example, for like computer games, they have like their own wikis and things like that, and you don't have to pay for it. You can just go on there and access any info. Well, that's what this should be. You know. Yeah, agreed. This they is the just sort of shit that is in White Dwarf, with... in Old White Dwarf. You shouldn't have to be fucking paying I'm sure seventeen dollars because these things are not very in depth either. They just when you open a page, it brings up a picture of like a swatch sample of the paint they've used and they just like yes yeah, so the paint like the arms and legs in this swatch you know it, it's not as good as like the old um heavy metal images like here we go actually no this one's better i'll take it back it's a little bit better but again you look at this one picture here and clearly they can put the picture online for free why can't they put the whole fucking book online for free because they want money, Maka. The the shit isn't cheap. You know, I doubt they're going to make enough money the, back the on these that, things. The stuff that they to used to it. put in White Dwarf for free is now a fucking paid DLC. Yeah, well, good luck with that, GW, you nundies. So, yeah, this is why I'm not going to buy them. Because of these. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sending my message to them by instead fucking selling my soul to Forge World. Mm, that's counterproductive. Um. Yeah, I would love to have owned a Gene Stiller um, cult army. It's never going to happen now. Not unless I see one in two weeks' time that someone bought out of greed on, and they're so out of hobby guilt, you know, on eBay. Then maybe I'll pick one up. But, yeah, not from Games yeah. Workshop. So There's better things coming, man. There are better things aren't coming, and I definitely recommend people, especially if you're in 30K at the moment, uh, I'd save you pennies. I'd be saving you pennies. Do not... Get tempted in that Gene Steel Cult is the tip of the iceberg of what GW and Forge Weller have planned for Just unleashes. Just the tip. Uh, shit. All right, we'll move along now. Yes. All right, we, yeah. I've bitched and whinged enough. GG, GW. Ha ha. Ha ha ha. Okay, so now we're doing War, War Game, Game Exclusive. Exclusive. Now, I stumbled across this site uh, just recently, and um, now... You've got recasters, and then you've got people you're blatantly not giving a fuck, and I think this, this is the uh, the latter. So this dude has some sweet uh, stuff like, all right, just going to the greater good. For example, I hate Tao. I did own a Tao army one time. But he's got some cool... Um, I painted those communist some cool bastards. Guys. Yeah, but these, these are some more in-depth their, their pulse rifles look even sweeter than the um, current ones, and their characters like, their characters shit all over Games Workshop's Tau characters. Just putting that holy out there. motherfucking shit. All right, so then we will go out of that. That that's for one of the shittier options, I guess. Uh, if you go to oh, Heresy Hunters, I believe, uh, and going on the Gene Stealer Colts, there was used they used to have a limo. Um, and it's un and people are un it's unaware of if GW are going to be releasing a limo for them. There's uh, this you know there's rumors and stuff, but this guy actually produces limo amongst uh, as well as a bunch of other cars. So They're I think pretty sweet right? Yeah, they look pretty sick. Um, I might get some for just for terrain purposes you oh, get even, even you get an imperial car car so many cars, cars like model a batmobile pack. there's like an imperial yeah, man. eagle batmobile oh, that's these so are cool. in euros so uh, uh, like, but at least you get oh there's more packs there's like packs of three yeah and then there's like then you get like the the five pack you can get all of the vehicles not the limos though look okay, at how there's like two limos what the fuck Why is there two I, I just love like the tim burton batman batmobile with the aquilas instead of the um the bat wings on the back of it comrade kurz is totally driving that for he okay is, so these he is batman. yeah right. so these things are on like anti-grabs that's pretty funny 
Yeah. Okay, one's armored. You can get an up armored limousine, or you can get the normal <laughs> civilian limousine on autograms. Fuck yeah! I, I knew um, I knew some um, US soldiers um, back in the day, and they uh, were showing us pictures of some of their Humvees. Um, and in fact, we saw some of the very same Humvees when they brought them over at a Showwater. And they they over in Iraq, they they decided that they would pay the local like fucking merchants and got scrap steel off them and got them to weld it on as local fabricators, weld on extra armour to the fucking Humvees um, in an effort to up-armour them. And the blokes turned around and they're going, yeah, it used to be that the round would enter the Humvee and, like, clean exit through the other side. Now what happens is the round hits the Humvee and it starts tumbling and just lodges in you instead. <laughs> and so whenever I see something up-armoured now, that's all I can think of is, like, it's it's less helpful and it's more of a hindrance. It's just the car got slower and heavier and less responsive, and now the rounds are tumbling when they enter. <laughs> well, it depends on what rounds you're using, but yeah, um, we won't get into that. Now, for the uh, if you go into Space Warriors, they have a bunch of alternate heads. Um, I think I like the fifth one across, but I, I don't know. I don't really like any of the heads. The heads look meh. At best. Yeah, they don't do it for me. They, Although I like the Not Belial. He's pretty cool. The Space Warrior Wing of Death Angel Terminator oh, yeah. Commander. It's like they've used... Yeah, he's a better <laughs> Belial. Holy crap. He is a lot better than the other motherfucker. Do, do you reckon these guys, when they um, name shit, they um, sit there with like a thesaurus? <laughs> What's another name for... <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> they just put it in Google. Um, I, I was looking in the Necro Cyborgs earlier, and they've got some really cool characters. Um, they've got, like, the spider leg dude. They've made their own version of him, and he looks way the fuck better, I reckon. Yeah, and then um, they have some uh, other dude. I won't bore you with the pictures now, but they've got Imperial Relics of Saint Brother set, which are just dead skeletons that are hanging, which are good for chucking on rhinos. Uh, Chaos, the Chaos line in this. Um, on the site also has a bunch of more more dead looking guys and they've got also some ultimate tracks and all this other stuff as well so definitely check them out if you are looking for some ultimate miniatures or you just want to fucking piss away a lot of money I just got quickly looking at Adeptus um, the Adept Mechanicus one so like yeah the, the um, Castellan robot alternative heads is just the one I want to point out because um one of the worst fucking models I've seen in a long time is the Castellan from Games Workshop. It's in, like, their 40K Adeptus Mechanicus. It's that real bulbous-looking um, Mechanicum, like, not Castellax thing. Okay. Um, it looks like the mechanized walker out of the end of Mars Attacks. It's, it's yeah. Anyway, the thing's butt ugly, and it has this weird face on it. Lots of people replace it with this castle and robot alternative head and it looks so much better in fact you can if you click on it you can see the castle and with the new head in there cat yeah right yep um yeah it looks all right for five euros though you could, there's there's a lot of alternates out there that's just a head really um if you're looking for something to just paint i, I like this site they've got some of their some of their um Space elves, as they call them, are pretty sick. Cause, yeah, just there are. Uh, what are they? The spider jerk guys. Their alternate spider jerks are freaking awesome. Like, holy crap! If I was playing second edition 40k still, holy crap! This is this would be the site where I'd go to. But anyways, yeah, definitely. Yes, moving on. So obviously, a few interesting things got released this week, or we know are coming. The first is Lehman Russ. The Primark of the Space Puppies. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen pictures of him when he was a work in progress. Um, and obviously, there's now pictures of him fully painted. What do you think of him, Kat? Eh, he's not, he's not great. I, I actually really like him. I think they've done a good job. It's just two little things. The first is the way his right hand attaches to his arm, whether that was how he's just been assembled or something just looks weird about it to me. It's a it's a real nitpick, so, 
you know, I'm not complaining about it, just saying it looks a bit odd. But the other thing is his sword looks a lot like uh, Frostmourne yeah, from World of, from uh, Warcraft. And, and World he Warcraft. looks a lot like the dude with blonde hair from that who turns, like, evil, which is pretty funny. So, so every time I see this miniature, I just think Frostmourne hungers, which is pretty funny. Uh, um, mm, Lehman, he's, Lehman Russ confirmed, confirmed for Arthas. He is the Lich yeah. King. He's trampling all over your shit there, too. I know. Well, All over you know your house. what? They, they, they fucking cheated. They were, yeah, sl- they were slippery well. gypsies. They cheated. Prospero only fell because they cheated. Well, it really doesn't matter, does it? It's just the outcome. And they kick your ass. So this will be first access available before general release at Warhammer European Open Day in Amsterdam on the Saturday, the 1st of October, 2016. So uh, if you go into that... Uh, you might want to get this guy and chucking him up on eBay to get some extra coins. My birthday's on the 5th. If anyone wants to get him and send him to me, I wouldn't complain. You're just going to melt him, man. Well, you're just no, going to melt will, him as a dead mind. guy. I, I, I've been collecting all the Primarchs, so they're, <laughs> they're in the top of my display I just The sword just looks out of place, and with him running, and he's just like, wait a minute, what's over there? It looks like he's got a shield on the back with a wolf pelt. I'm happy they didn't go full... Games Workshop with Full this guy. Wolfy, wolf, wolf, like, wolf, oh my wolf. god, it would have just been out of control with GW. They would have made him an entire wolf or something with, I don't know. <laughs> wolf with um, armor. We might actually see that because apparently there's rumors of 40k getting um, a bunch of Primarchs. Uh, 40k Primarchs. Plastics as well. So they're just going to be... <laughs> he's actually probably going to be a giant wolf or something, a werewolf, because uh, the Chaos Primarchs will be demons, obviously, so I don't I don't imagine that the fluff for him will be he comes out of the warp as a giant werewolf like or some shit. It'd just be ridiculous. But anyway, that's him and he looks like he's getting the business done with his axe and Frostmorn. So yeah, Frostmorn hungers and yeah, we'll move on, I guess. From that, uh, we also had a leak of the November or October. No, it is November White Dwarf. And there is... Um, on the cover of the White Dwarf, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you guys, but the free gift is uh, some dwarf for Total War it's the Warhammer. White dwarf. It it yeah. So uh, as dwarves are probably the second least effective army in that freaking game, uh, the last thing they need is another dwarf. What they need is like some sort of anti cav unit or something, but. Anyway, that's Spears probably not overrated. the highlight of it. That's the free gift that you get for when you're paying thirteen dollars for a magazine. But so now we have uh, so on the front cover there is uh, what looks to be Castos, and they are on some sort of printed terrain, and there's also a bunch of thousand suns on them, and there's some space wolves in the background. Uh, there is um, Mark Three Armor the um, and you put your dudes in Mark Four, didn't you? Anyways, yes. The uh, the be yeah, Thousand Suns are in Mark armor, uh, Mark Three armor, and there's also Tartarus Terminator armor in there as well. And uh, you also yeah, there's it looks to be B- Bjorn Bjorn, yeah Bjorn. Maybe, I think it is. I don't Bjorn? know. Yeah. I don't know. No, that don't know. Some Bjorn. Dude. I'm pretty sure he was armed with an axe and Prospero book. This might okay. just be. Generic wolf lord, wolfing von wolf wolf of fucking wolfington, because that's how I know Games Workshop likes to name their characters. Yeah, but it actually says on the on the cover there, Age of Darkness rules for Legion custodes in heresy heresy battles. So that I think that will probably be worth it. Is that pretty much making a dark card? If the only place that these rules are going to be are in the fucking white dwarf. Maybe. It'll, it'll be interesting times coming along. So what we people are speculating is that it's going to be a new box set that the room has been out for ages with, uh, like uh, Battle of Kelf, but unlike Battle of Kelf, it'll be um, Thousand Suns, uh, the Space Wolves on Prospero. Uh, will there be custodes in there? Who knows? Uh, it, it, it might be, a, it'll be a contained box again, like Battle of Kelf. Uh, and I reckon it'll be like open world, not just um, like underground, like that thing it was. 
But yeah, so there's that. I which is um, the thing. couple couple things I want to note out about the sculpts and what I'm seeing. The comically large sized um, swords and weapons on the custodes. Mm. Like, I don't know, the artwork always depicted them as being rather sleek. These guys remind me, really remind me of the uh, Stormcast Eternals, the gold dudes from Fantasy. Or, sorry, Age of fucking Copyright. Um, so, I guess in a good way, this means that people will stop finally converting up shitty conversions of Stormcasts into custodes. And, Wrecked! Um, like, you want to convert your own custodes... Because, you know, everyone's unique and everyone's the first guy to think of the idea. That's fine. If you're going to do it, though, remove, like, the fucking hammer and lightning bolts of Sigma and things like that from it, at the very least. Like, if you're going to do the conversion, don't half-arse it. So, yeah, just, I don't know. That sort of shit gets on my OCD. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like these will only be the, the only pack. I don't know if they'll have. I'm calling it right, more right now, man. Uh, bandwagon. This is going to be fucking every cunt is going to have a fucking unit of custodes. Maybe, there's maybe they just There's going to be nothing but pages of pages of people putting pictures of custodes up on on wargaming pages. Uh, of course, I, of I course. guarantee. It. But what about people's armies? I'm I'm going to probably get a set now. If they're inside fucking the box, bandwagon. if they're inside the box with. Uh, the Wolves and Thousand Suns, which I don't think they will be. Um, yeah, because I will probably get two boxes of those, uh, which I did of Kelth as well. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with it. Try to exterminate it. Armor. It's pretty cool. Find something to do with that. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I like it. It's pretty cool. I look forward to that White Dwarf. I am not looking forward to um, October's White Dwarfs review that will be a pain in my dick, but I will do it. Um, at least I get a cool free comic. Yeah, boy. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It's cool. It's, there's interesting times ahead. At, at least there, it's not just stagnating and there are things that's progressing. Yeah, this might be the next bandwagon, but this is fun because it doesn't matter what it would be. Um, it, it's gonna, there's going to be the next thing. There will always be and, the next thing. There will always yeah, be so, the next bandwagon. Yeah. I don't, I'll say I'm not disappointed angry bitter any of that i'm just I, I just want to see people putting the heart and soul into it you know don't just there's this one fucking dude i was talking about him the other week he seems to just buy models and then just put them straight back up for sale like yeah don't don't just go out and buy these on a whim and then guilt sell them a week later well unless you want to sell them to me for dirt cheap in which case i'm all for it but you know, if you're going to go out and buy these, man, make the most of them. Do a good job. Put put your heart, put your effort into it. Even if it's a shit paint job, but you tried really hard, that's that's all I want to see, man. So, I don't know if that counts as almost They're stimulating motivational economy. for me. They're stimulating the economy, especially the Australian ones, since one of these costos probably costs, like, fucking 30 grand. I'm certain at this point that our entire GW's entire profit margin is generated by Australia. <laughs> uh, see, that would be true if we didn't live so close to Pirate Island. I believe that people <laughs> in Australia buy more recast than they actually do legit for uh, 40k. Uh, there's no way a population could be brainwashed, right? Right? <laughs> anyway. Well, let's still look at look at Game of Thrones, man. The only way to get Game of Thrones in Australia is to have Foxtel, which is like a what would the US call it? Cable, cable TV. So you got to buy like a really shitty fucking cable TV package just to watch this one show. And then when you go to watch it, Australia's internet is like fucking paper cups on a piece of string in most places still. They're trying to go to like fiber, but even that's a clusterfuck. Um, so nobody can really watch the show using the legitimate service um, until like a week after it's come out. A lot of people struggle to watch it because it's just the... the well, Game of Thrones... Down. Yeah, so instead, no, I was watching instead it everyone work, fucking pirates so, it. <laughs> yeah, but it, it does come out on the same day. It's just that you need Foxhell to watch it. Yes, you and you can Foxhell. use uh, that pay, that freaking, you can record it while you're away. So that's not an issue. But yeah, paying uh, $30 a month and then a joining fee of $200 over the thingy and then over a 24-month period, that's based on $2,600. That's unrealistic. And to watch one show, no. 
yeah, it's you, should, not happening. you shouldn't have to pay two grand a year just to watch. You're your, doing watch exactly show. the same thing GW is, and you're creating your own pirates. Anyway, moving on from yes. that, we've already been over that. We always bring up Game of Thrones, don't we? Uh, All right, so yeah. what are we going on to now? Comments? Um, yeah, any any interesting comments? Sort of, I was looking through. Uh, wow, thanks for the views, thanks for the support, guys. For whatever reason, um, me bitching about the Chaos Codex, but calmly instead of angrily with a shit mic seem to have an effect on people because a lot of people have watched the video liked the video and commented on it um yeah it's great to see so i just i just want to say a thank you for that um there's a lot of comments some we replied to um last week like i remember leviathan omega we commented um because he he wrote a sort of a an essay and i just had to reply to him given the time of day but the big thing i want to note is um pretty much everyone commenting here is like, yep, we agree with your video. There's no one, I mean, what, an 11th? Not even an 11th? What's a 12th? More. It's uh, nearly a 15th of the people who've liked it uh, are dis have disliked it. And the disliking people aren't coming out and commenting about why they're disliking it. They just are probably because of me. Um... But yeah, everyone's got the same problem. They're like, I loved Chaos in 3.5. I loved that I could play my Night Lords, you know. I loved that I could do this with it. I loved that I had a really good corn army. And now they're like, oh, I, I don't have a good corn army. I, I, you know, expected Traders Hate to fix that. It didn't. Oh, I don't have a Night Lords army at all anymore. Like this one guy, uh, Callus Typhon. Yeah, seems familiar been a follower of the fluff and collector since he was 12 he's 27 now and he's always loved chaos especially the legions his night lords are his favorite and he wanted to start playing 40k again didn't want to play black legion painted blue you see games workshop doesn't do market research this sort of thing here is market research you know the people are all going i don't like the chaos codex now i don't like um, that I can't run my legion. I don't like that the rules are based around being chaos undecided. If I was working in Games Workshop, even even if it was just you know circumstantial, you know minor data, I would be looking at that and saying clearly we're going in the wrong direction because people do not like what we've done with chaos for the last fifteen years. I know, cat if. Is there anything you sort of have to say on that, or...? No, not really. That's, you've pretty much said it all. But those four people that dislike this, it's probably because... Not that they dislike the video, it's just because they dislike uh, Chaos Space Marine. Or they have a vendetta against it, me and Maka, and they too pussy to actually say anything. But that's cool. I'm a pussy too. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I don't mind hate when people, like... We always like post trigger warnings and stuff like that with our videos because we swear all the time and people sometimes comment to us and they're like, oh, you guys, you guys are fucking pussies, you, you little guys, that's why you swear. It's like, no, we just swear because we're like fucking white trash, I guess. Yeah, I think it's the equivalent. I'm not very smart. I don't have a huge IQ. I didn't do a lot of uh, school, um, but I can shoot things in the face so i've made a living out of that but um unfortunately that uh work has a lot to do with uh fuck shit and cunt but uh dimitri xxx 69 comes out and says don't worry in june 2017 warhammer 40k will get the age of sigma treatment and none of this stuff will meld matter there you go heard it here first from our special source dimitri xxx 69 uh, fucking pro player right there. Uh, June 2017, Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigma. We'll call it Age of 40k. Yep. A a Get yeah. wrecked. Yep. Demon Primark confirmed. Um, yep. What else? What else is confirmed? Uh, yeah. Um, the Demon Primarchs are confirmed. All the um, uh, so, uh, Russ will be a uh, a big, uh, werewolf kind of guy. Who? What other Primark is alive? Um, I don't know. Lionel Johnson will be a fucking the big friendly giant. Why not? I couldn't think of anything else. Uh, uh, Gilliman. Gilliman's will be... coming back, but he'll be shot. He'll be a giant and made entirely of solid gold. <laughs> yes. 
Which is exactly how exactly, Garrett gold. <laughs> which is exactly how Games Workshop sees him. <laughs> Sixteen carat gold. Yes, I can see that happening. Oh my god, yes. So yeah, what about the lion? I don't know about the lion. What would the lion be? What's their motif? Because they used to be like, um, um, like back in Road Trader, they used to be like uh, native oh, I found him. Americans. I found him. All hail King Homer. Yeah, and then um, but. Yeah, I reckon, I don't know, what would the lion be? Like, he would just come back as a fucking lion. Lion v. Wolf. Yeah, fuck yeah. Why not? And what other Primarch is allegedly alive? I don't know. Alpharius. Oh, just be a all all the Loyalists are alive except for Ferris because he had a fucking too close to shave one day. Yeah, true. I don't know. No, Korax will come back as like full fucking Gotham Batman or something. As an actual bird. Ooh, Koof the Raven, nevermore. Um... He'll actually come back with wings and shit. It'll be crazy. Yeah, I reckon that'll happen. It'll basically be... Uh, and with the new Power Rangers movie coming out in 2017, I can actually see this happening. And then all the Primarchs, like, like get together and become this big droid thing. Oh, they'll have their this own spot. They'll have their own Zoids. Yeah. Games Workshop yeah. loves monstrous creatures. They'll yeah. make their own Zoids for the... Pro- to, and that's confirmed. Oh, that's not a rumor. Confirmed. That is confirmed. No, that is 100%, 100% confirmed. If you like and share this video, you'll also receive one in your house, at your house in uh, in a week. But yeah, that's a good idea. And then they'll each week, they'll bring out a new uh, demon Primarch for them to to fight. And they'll fight, and then the demon Primarch will just grow big for some reason, there, and there, they have to get their Zoids and a, they'll on. There will be... There, that's a, there's a fluff precedent, man. Magnus the Red had to fight um, two Gargants. This is back in the old epic fluff. And so being like a fucking mad wizard, he scaled himself up to the size of a Gargant and punched on with it. Like So there is a precedent for it. So Zoids, Power Rangers Zoid, fucking confirmed. confirmed and they're going to have their own box set. And it's going to be $30. <laughs> it's going to be $30. It's going to have 100 Zoids in it. and and 100 Zoids? What the hell? 100 Zoids. Oh, Jesus. Um, Yep, because cause all the special characters also have their own mini zoids, and they're Nine like and they're like the power ups for their Primark zoids. One hundred percent confirmed, man. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, you heard it, you heard it here first. All right, I think that uh, that wraps it up. Thanks for all those likes on Macca's videos. Lol. Um, yeah, might do some more nostalgia in the past. Maybe people are just that pissed off. That's crazy. I didn't think people would be that. People I thought all those other Pe- people just. <laughs> can't eloquently even i can't eloquently phrase why i'm pissed off at times i just you know you you pop the blood vessel in your eye and you yell and you swear and you know fuck this fuck that gw pack of cunts and and people are sick of that because it's all they see on forums like you know spiky bits and battle of souls is every time something gets released like a new 40k codex someone's there going oh fucking update chaos why haven't you updated chaos? people are just sick of that when you know there's a reason people are doing it, you know, so. Mm. Yeah, and it hasn't gotten any better. I don't understand where the Gene Steeler cult fits in with their 13th like, crusade thing, whatever. Well, oh, whatever. well, you know, the Tyranids will probably be, it'll be like a Red Alert, uh, not Red Alert, sorry, Command and Conquer 3, where they introduce the third race, the Skrin. And what was happening was GDI was fighting Nod, you know, Nod being Chaos, and then all of a sudden they sort of had to work together to take down the alien invaders. Bullshit. Dun, 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 dun. No Fuck off. No. And then like, anyway. they, they both sides broke up into like a bunch of splinter groups, so like some of the Nod guys still wanted to like fight GDI, some of the Nod guys sort of were all cool with GDI, and yeah, I don't know, maybe wow. 40k will do that, you know, like Chaos and the Imperium will work together to fight the Nids, but like, the Chaos Legions and Abaddon will be like, fuck that, and they just want to take over anyway. I don't know. Yeah, true. But with the uh, heresy side of things, definitely exciting things to come in uh, October, or sorry, sorry, uh, November. So there's a month in October that we can save our pennies, and probably uh, more things to come out over October with uh, sneak peeks and stuff with uh, Heresy, obviously we've got the Amsterdam preview, so more stuff to come out of Heresy on that. Hoping for the next book. Yeah, <laughs> you'd hope so with uh, allegedly this box coming out in November, this box set, 
uh, you'd hope so, because it'd be weird, really weird for him to come out of this box with no um, Prospero Burns book. Well, as I said, they've mistimed things in the past. Like I would have, yeah, I would have tried to coincide a new BFG release with the BFG computer game. Uh, instead, they're focusing on Blood Bowl. Okay. Yeah, well. I don't know. Try and time the two. Try and time things at the same time, because then you get cross flow. You know, people who play computer games might suddenly become interested in the hobby. People who are into the hobby might suddenly throw a few dollars at the computer games. You see, so you get to double dip on people. Wouldn't that be sweet? Maybe you could drop Australia's prices. All right, that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, Cat, anything you want to say to our beloved audience of shitlords? No, just thanks for viewing. Uh, the support's been great recently. Uh, it's always cool seeing um, people just messaging, saying, "Hey, really love that," or "I like that," and it's, um, especially the likes and stuff. It's like you know, we're a small channel, and it's a very unique uh, part of the hob- hobby. Obviously, we uh, for more of the adult audience and people that aren't uh, get their hit- feelings hurt too uh, too much. So, uh, thanks a lot, and that's it's really like you know, a thousand people. Uh, watching a video it's uh they're, they're all individual people so thanks to each and every one of you and it's definitely a motivation to do editing and holy crap uh editing is a pain in the ass but yeah cheers um and stay tuned yeah thanks again guys um as i say you, you can comment to us you won't hurt our feelings we don't get triggered we, we're literally my heart is a lump of coal um if you look at our videos you'll see people say geez mackie you're a hateful man and yes i am so you know Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, this is free content as well. You know, we're not walling it off behind a paywall or, you know. Who the hell would pay us? If yeah, no one no would. Yeah. Then again, if we slapped a GW logo on, it's <laughs> some shitlords in a fucking Games Workshop would probably, <laughs> would probably pay us. So they'll pay for mm-hmm. anything, fucking scrubs. All right, see you all next time.